Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Right, let's make a start. Now we've got a couple of things to do. We've got to create the texture and then we've got to create some color controls. And I've got a few tricks to show you along the way as well. So I'm in the shading um, tab. I'm going to enable viewport shading. I'm using the cycles render engine and I've already got um, this shape loaded. Now I'm going to rotate it actually a bit on the x-axis so I can catch some of the light coming down. And basically this um, material will work better on surfaces that have got angles or um, smooth surfaces that go across. So basically um, anything other than just something dull and boring and uniform. Now we don't need the principal shader for this one so we're going to delete that and we are going to add a Voronoi texture so shift A search and Voronoi texture we're going to plug the color from that into the material output I'm going to leave all the settings the same apart from the scale which for the benefits of the tutorial, I'm going to um, increase to 50, but when it comes to the final output, I'll increase to 5,000. So you can see how it basically reduces the scale of those um, speckled bits, those weird shapes. Leave the randomness at one. I'm going to need to add a gamma node in here and drop it on the Voronoi texture leave it set at one and then we'll leave that there for now I'm going to grab us a layer weight node and a glossy oops not a group input a glossy shader and we'll pop this on there so you can see it's now got quite a nice luster to it. This layer weight is going to come in handy with uh, something later on. So we'll leave that off to the one side for now. Uh, yeah, leave it there. For the roughness on this glossy shader, set that to 0 0.05. So we've now got a nice glossy surface. And you can see how it's still including the colour underneath as well. Okay, now we are going to need to mix this with something uh, which is basically our color. So let's go and create that. We'll start with an RGB node. That's going to give us our basic color. Then we need another glossy shader and two diffuse shaders. Now we need to mix the bottom two together with a mixed shader. And we need to bring this layer weight over here under the Voronoi texture. Bring these three over under there. Move the RGB over. We need some space. And we're going to take the facing value from this layer weight and use that as our factor in the mix shader here. We're then going to grab a... Sorry, we're then going to mix this with the gamma. Mm, no. Let's duplicate this mix shader. Take the shader from here, plug it into the bottom. Take the glossy from there and plug it into the shader. 
and then use the gamma output as the factor. We then need a third mix shader and a fourth, and the fourth one can go right at the end. Now we're going to take the diffuse from here into the bottom slot of this shader. Going to grab a another layer weight node, use the facing value as the factor and set that to 0.25. And then plug this mix shader into there. So let me just move these about a bit so you can see clearly where the paths are running from and to. And then this shader is going to go into the final one. So you can see how instantly that brightened it up. We're going to increase the factor to 0.9 here. So we're kind of knocking that back to almost a black and white at the moment. But don't panic, we're going to get this color connected and involved. Uh, so let's just move these about a bit. We don't need to connect that gamma to the glossy anymore. So we can move that up there, move that there, move that there, move that there. There we go, that's tidier. Now, for the colours, basically in this um, node, we're going to set the primary colour, but we're going to do some clever math in between to basically split this down and make these two darker shades of the key color here. So let's set this value now to, let's say just red. And let's connect that up to the color. And you can see how that's already affecting the main um, piece. That's fine, we're gonna leave that as it is. Next up, we're going to grab a separate HSV, that's who, saturation and value and take the color from the RGB node into that. We also need a combine HSV, so when it comes out, it recombines everything. And we only want to change the value, so we're gonna connect up the hue and saturation automatically between the two, and plug this into the color. Now, in between those two, we need a math node And we're going to connect up the value, change this to subtract, and leave that at 0.5. So basically, it's taking this red value here and subtracting 0.5. So it'll take the value down to 0.5. So if I click on this, you can see it's a much darker shade already. Uh, let's get back to the main shader. Now, I'll move that up there. What we can do now is just duplicate this, connect up the color to one end and the color to the diffuse at the other end. And this time we'll change the value to 0.85. So we now have a bright red, a dimmer red, and an even darker red. And basically what's happening is Layer weights and gammas are affecting each of those as they go up, and then this final mix shader will mix this red with all this texture into the glossiness. Boink, like so. Now, do you remember how I said I'm going to change the value here on the scale? Because it's quite chunky right now, but to give it that sort of car paint look, we want lots of tiny little flecks. So I'm going to increase that to 5,000. There we go. Now you can change a few other factors here. If you change this value, it'll be darker or lighter. I prefer to leave it at around 0.5. Uh, and obviously if you change this value, the RGB value, it'll change the car paint color so that's very easy to change and of course you can change the value 
but it might affect overall because we're using math to subtract. So you probably can't go less than 0.85. Um, okay, now with the roughness on these, these three are glossy and the two diffuse. For the glossy, I'm setting it at 0.25. And watch what happens here if I undo that. You can see we've got quite a flat highlight there. But if I increase that to 0.25, you'll see how there's now a rosy glow that matches the colour. And it kind of gives this, um, what can I call it, halo. And you can see the more I increase that, the more that happens. So it's a way of adding that sort of showroom shine to it. Now for the diffuse, the first one I'll set at 0.75. And actually I'll set the second one at 0.75 as well. They don't make a huge difference to the overall look. They're just there for aesthetics. Uh, so that is your completed node tree. So just to clarify, this lot here, if I frame it and give it some color, these are your color controls. And these ones at the top are oops, your texture controls. So you can, of course, fiddle about with these if you want to. You, you'll get all sorts of random things depending on what you do. These bits are basically just mixing them all together to give you the finished result. So the um, Voronoi texture is really the one to play with here because that will change the actual texture uh, of those little bits that we uh, wanted. And then the RGB value is the one to change the color. Of course, you can plug a color ramp in here. I'm not sure what that's going to do, but for now, I'm going to leave it there and I'll send it to render and we'll see what we get. And there you have it. Car spray paint. Easily done with procedural materials. Now you can see that nice sort of glowing shine in the matching color there. I think that looks very, very beautiful. And it was very quick to render as well at only 30 seconds uh, using 512 samples. So you might get a better result with more samples and it won't take that long. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe for future content and let your friends, your Blender chums know. Uh, your Blender family, your Blender blogs, your Blender florums, whatever you want to do. Uh, just spread the word and let them know I'm here I'm trying to build the channel over time. I've not been around for long, but I'm already getting lots of positive feedback. <coughs> so yes, please let everyone know. Anyway, in the meantime, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon.